Many of the boats I feature on my channel carry with them a rich tapestry of history, not just in their achievements, but also in the stories of the individuals behind their creations. Among these is this motor yacht, designed in 1991 by Dick Boone, who would go on to establish Vripak, one of the most prestigious yacht design studios in the world. This boat stands as a testament to a golden era of yacht design, embodying the pioneering spirit and craftsmanship that continues to influence modern boat design today. Of course, Vripak now graces the waters with some of the most beautiful explorer-style yachts, a legacy that harks back to those formative years when the seeds of greatness were first sown. Before I show you around this Doggers Bank 1900, and trust me, this is one boat tour you're not gonna want to miss, please don't forget to give the video a like, and also please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This boat has an LOA of 19 meters, a beam of five meters, and a draft of 1.6 meters. Her steel hull is round bilged, and the vessel has a displacement of 53 tons. As well as a steel hull, her superstructure is also made out of steel. Round bilge hulls offer fantastic sea keeping in rough conditions, rolling more smoothly in waves for a comfortable transit. They also reduce drag, improve fuel efficiency and speed, which is crucial for long range cruising in explorer yachts. The boat is powered by a single 220 horsepower MTU diesel engine, and she has a total of six berths in three cabins. I've just been on board for a bit of a recce before filming, and I must admit, I was really blown away by the condition of the interior. Now, this boat was built in the early 90s, but when I take you inside and show you around, you would never really guess that because she is in such good condition. But anyway, let's have a look around the upper deck first before we go in. A few things to point out here. Obviously, we've got something we can grab onto as we're making our way around the boat. Uh, we've got another one over there on the starboard side as well. And here we have a cow vent. These are used on boats for ventilation, and they also allow fresh air to enter the interior of the boat, and they facilitate the circulation of air. So they help to prevent the buildup of moisture, fumes, and stale air as well. And obviously, these can be covered and one thing that you would want to do before you started motoring is make sure they're not facing forward. Let's continue forward using the port side deck. As you can see, lots more of those cow vents dotted all around here as well. The boat is fitted with a decent sized anchor. This is attached to 110 meters of galvanized chain. She can be operated by an owner with the right experience. This raised section of the foredeck as well ensures that you get more headroom in the interior and I'll show you that in a second. Obviously got a skylight there that can be opened up and I'll sh again I'm going to show you the inside of that just as soon as we step inside the boat. check out that mast so over there on the starboard arm we've got a radar reflector so what that will basically do is ensure that the boat has a bigger radar signature uh, which is a really important thing especially when you're in busy channels or you know heading out to sea that's something you want to do is ensure that you're seen on other boats radars obviously we've got the radar there in the center searchlight over there on the starboard arm and over on the port arm looks like we've got an aerial and look right at the very top VHF aerial. It's a great place to have them. Helps ensure you get really, really good coverage. Okay, let's carry on heading down towards the aft section of the boat. Before I forget, we do have another boarding gate over here on the starboard side as well. Let's just spin around. Conscious that I want to do it slowly so you don't get motion sickness as I'm moving the camera around. Here we have the cockpit. As you can see, we've got a U-shaped seating area there, two tables, and look, you'll notice as well, this boat does have some rigging on it. So I guess if you wanted to, you could use this to assist the motor side of it. She does have a single engine on board, but yeah, you could definitely use that for some sail-assisted motoring, I would expect. Let's carry on heading aft. I like the fact as well that 
This seating area in the cockpit is really kind of sectioned off from the side deck, as you can see. So if you're working the lines, coming alongside or casting away, if you've got guests that are sat here, then as you're moving around, throwing the lines, you're not gonna interrupt them. But yeah, it's a nice touch. Okay, at the stern of the vessel now, then we've got the davits for the tender. And if I move just over here, you can see as well, look, we've got the passerelle and a swim platform, the boarding ladder over there on the port side. What I'm going to do now is take you in the interior. Let's just head down here, step over that. As you can see, the cover is on at the moment, but in just a few zips, all of this can be taken off and you can sit there at the helm, enjoying the sunlight and the fresh air. But yeah, this cover's in really good condition as well, actually. The broker was telling me that a refit is planned for this boat in September this year, assuming, of course, she doesn't sell before then. So the midship's helm position, then we have the captain's seat slightly aft, Another seating area over there on the port side. At the helm station we find a Brooks and Gatehouse compass, depth sounder and log with dual VHF radios. Autopilot is managed by Simrad Robertson and Coop Nautic Servo Systems. We also have a radar and GPS by Faruno and essential features like a plotter, navtex and of course the switches for the navigation lights and searchlights. Let's descend down into the saloon. Let's talk about the layout in here. So over on the port side, have this L-shaped seating area. Obviously we've got a table there. And over there on the port side forward is another helm station. So if the weather is bad and you don't want to be out in the elements, you can retreat into the comfort and safety of the saloon. Once you remove the cabinetry to reveal the main controls that are located here, you have everything you need to pilot the vessel from the comfort and warmth of the interior space. And you've got a VHF radio there, look. The Bose sound system on the brow. Got some more controls and dials up there. Now here is something that I haven't seen for quite a long time. So this device is a Navtex receiver, or specifically this is the Navtex 1 model by Locator. Navtex or Navigational Telex is a maritime communication system that was used for receiving automatic broadcasts of safety information, but it also provided crucial updates on weather forecasts, navigational warnings and urgent notices, such as search and rescue alerts. The received messages were printed on a paper roll for easy reference by the crew. But obviously in today's digital age, we don't often see that anymore on boats. Over on the starboard side, if we open up this cabinetry, you can see we've got the TV in there. So a great place to sit over here on the pool side whilst watching the TV. And if I come backwards and sit down here, I'll give you the angle of view that you get when you're sat back here relaxing. Good chance to get a breather as well as I'm walking around the boat. And look, if we look on the overhead, we've got a grab rail that runs along the center line of the boat as well so when you are navigating through those choppy seas you've got something to grab onto okay let's take you down into the guest accommodation a few surprises down here which i'm sure you're going to love down these four steps over on the port side now that is the access into the engine room and we'll check that out in a second and up here look you've got lots of switches and controls for all of the various electrical systems and lots of other stuff as well. If I step in here, I'm hoping that the low light function on this GoPro will do this area justice. Got a melee washer down there, look. If I open up this, here we have a melee fridge freezer. So I'm gonna shut that, I'm gonna turn around because behind this door, we have, this is the head for the second guest cabin. I'm gonna take you in that cabin in a second but this is a head that can also be used as a day head as well Got a porthole there that can be opened up and shut that door 
shut that, spin around, and I'll show you the first guest cabin. Over here on the starboard side, which is a twin single. So look, we've got an upper bunk and a lower bunk, and even got a little ladder there, look. So if you've got young people on board, you won't have to lift them up there. They can navigate their own way up onto the top bunk. Two portholes over there, little curtains as well. You can open up those portholes to ensure you get some good ventilation in here. And look, we've even got a tiny little desk there. So if you're going away on a long voyage and your little ones need to do some homework, that's a great place for them to sit and do their homework. Bit of storage there. Got some more hanging locker storage behind this door. Okay, let's head back out into the corridor. I'm gonna take you into the forward guest cabin. Double cabin here. Obviously that bed is slightly raised as well, so you can walk both on the starboard side of it and over on the port side as well. I like the fact we've got this little seating area here. Good place to wake up in the morning, sit down, enjoy your coffee or your tea. Porthole over there, again, that can be opened up to allow some ventilation in here. And we've got another one over here on the port side as well. If I close the door that leads into the ensuite, again, you can see you've got a little area that you can sit down here and catch up with some work, do some emails, take a little bit of the time out. Great place to sit and just relax, really. Open up this door. And here we have the shower. Heated towel out over there on that bulkhead. Down there we have the toilet. And of course, in here we have the shower. Pan over to the right. Big mirror there. Standard salute, as you were. We got the sink and some cabinetry under the sink to store your toiletries. Right, let's head out of here. Back into the cabin. Pivot round 180 degrees. And let's head aft. What I'm going to do is save the engine room till last, actually. So let's head back up into the saloon. So I want to show you the galley, another dining area, and of course the owner's cabin before we head into the engine room. So step down these four steps. Again, look, something to grab onto. Very important when you're out on those choppy seas. And over here on the port side, we have the galley. If I pan round over to the starboard side, here we have a seating area with the U-shaped seating there. Some more portholes over there on the starboard side. And I love this as well. Look at that. HMS Sovereign of the Seas, 1635 to 1696. Imagine serving on that. I'm sure my subscribers already know, but I did serve in the Navy, obviously not in the 1600s. So I love looking at pictures like this. Look at that. HMS Prince, 1670 to 1692. You just cannot imagine the conditions that the Matlows or the sailors on those ships must have had to endure. Just unbelievable. Anyway, I digress. Back to the boat in hand. As I say, over here on the port side is where we have the galley. Have an induction hob there. Let's open up some of these for you. A couple of switches in there. Nice little coffee maker there. I'll definitely be having a coffee after this. Here we have a double sink. Over there, the Bosch dishwasher. And if I spin around, so now we're facing aft. Have the microwave oven there. And in here, we have a fridge. So there we go. Now we've finished in the galley. Let me take you into the master cabin, which is full beam master cabin. So over there, we are looking on the port side, as you can see, you've got a great area, vanity area where you can sit down and get ready or whatever it is you need to do before going out. Entertainment system down there, look. Is that a cassette player or CD player? There we go. Haven't seen one of them for a while. Over here on the port side, we've got two portholes. Again, they can be opened up. And there we have the ensuite. I'm gonna look at that in a second. I just wanna show you over on the starboard side. Lots of natural light in here, thanks to those portholes. Plenty of headroom in here as well. Let's take you into the ensuite. So obviously we've got the toilet down there, another porthole, the curtains, another mirror, and here we have the shower. Okay, let's reverse up, head back out into the galley. Just have one final look around, just so you can get an idea of this space. 
Uh, the bed does lift up as well, so you can lift the bed up for some additional storage underneath there. Gonna head round 180 degrees now, so now we're facing forward. Obviously starboard side, port side. Gonna move through the galley, back up into the saloon, ascends these four steps. I'm gonna take you now into the engine room. Now, one of the things that you've obviously noticed is this raised area here. So we've got four steps that leads down into the galley and the owner's cabin aft. If I move around and show you the forward angle again, we've got four steps that lead down into the guest accommodation. Underneath here is the engine room. So this raised area, as you're gonna see in a minute, means you get plenty of headroom down there. And this is the thing, again, I always have an image in my head of what I think an engine room on a boat is gonna look like based on its size, design, year of build and everything else. But this engine room far exceeded my expectations. They say never judge a book by its cover. Well, never judge an engine room by the vessel's size. So let's get into the engine room. We lift up that part there, latch that into position. Let me just open up this. And here we have the engine room door. Open up that and down we go. In the engine room, we have a single MTU engine with 220 horsepower, equivalent to 161.92 kW, running on diesel with 5,950 engine hours logged. The engine uses a freshwater heat exchanger for cooling and drives an oil lubricated shaft through a twin disc gearbox. For auxiliary power, there's a diesel secondary engine via a generator. A hydraulic bow thruster is also fitted to this boat and the exhaust system is water cooled. The propeller is fixed and the shaft is stainless steel. The electrical installation includes options for 12, 24 and 220 volts. A wet exhaust generator along with start and service batteries ensures a reliable power supply. The engine room is also equipped with eight service batteries and dedicated generator batteries, all supported by a Mastervolt Mass 24100C battery charger. For power management, we have a Mastervolt Mass Scene 24 inverter. Shore power connection is available with a cable. And finally, the fin stabilizers are by Coop Nautic, enhancing the vessel's stability at sea. There are two 2,500 litre or 660 US gallon fuel tanks, as well as a 3,000 litre fresh water tank, which is about 790 US gallons. There is also an 800 litre tank for black water. When it comes to this boat's range, I've had to do some calculations because there's no official figures in the public domain in terms of how far she can travel on a single tank of fuel. Based on my very rough calculations, so please don't quote these, I've worked out that she has a range of around 3,000 nautical miles when traveling at an average speed of around eight knots in fair weather conditions. But what do you think of this engine room? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So a big thanks for joining me on board this yacht tour. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around this Doggers Bank 1900. I'd like to say a big thank you to Altena and also to Devork Yacht Brokers for letting me come on board and show you around. Now, at the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, the boat is currently listed for sale. If you wanna find out more, then be sure to head to the link in the video description or the link that I've left pinned in the comments to find out more about this beautiful boat. I've really enjoyed having a look around. It's full of hidden surprises, lots of great features that I didn't expect when I first saw her. So I hope that whoever buys her next will give her the tender loving care that she so deserves. She really is a fantastic boat. Remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then you can get in contact with me. Again, all of my contact details you can find via the link in the video description. If you've got a boat that you're looking to buy, sell, or if you're looking to charter a boat anywhere in the world, regardless of your budget, whether you want a motorboat, you want to charter a sailboat, 
in the Caribbean or the Mediterranean, then please get in contact with me. I've teamed up with TJB Super Yachts in order to be able to offer you guys some fantastic once in a lifetime packages. But anyway, if you wanna find out more about that, again, you know where to go, my microsite. Head to the link in the video description or the one pinned in the comments. And of course, if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like, especially at this point in the video, it will really help with its reach. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I really, really wanna try and get to 100,000 subscribers, if we can, by the end of the year. But anyway, that's enough from me. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the boat tour video that I made about this very interesting classic boat. And also check out the video that I made about this Stevens commuter. You'll find the link for both videos in the video description. Thank you.